We are under the lights for race number seven of Division One of the SRA Skittles Super Speedway Series here at the Pensacola Super Speedway. Good evening, everybody. I'm Seth Cole, and we are getting set for what should be, I think, one of our most fastest paced races so far this season. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of speed when you come to a super speedway track, but this track in particular, if you didn't tune into qualifying, single car speed, these drivers can go from anywhere from 220 to 225 by themselves, and then it jumps up to about 230 to 235 when they're in a pack. So in terms of speed, I think this might be the highest that these drivers have gotten to in miles per hour so far this season at any of the super speedways we've gone to so far on the schedule. Another interesting thing too that we need to point out is that with this being race number seven, we are very, very close. Midway through next week's race is going to be the midway point of the regular season. And so far here in this division, we have had six races, five different winners. Which means right now only three spots available for drivers to get into one of those eight playoff spots via points. And it just, to me, doesn't look like it's going to be possible for anybody to be able to do that because there's such a limited number of spots available. I think it's going to come down to who has the most wins. Now, Brady Burkhart has two wins, so that all but locks himself up a spot in the playoffs. But we're going to have to see if another driver here tonight with a win can add their name to the list of drivers that are trying to represent for the chase here in Division 1. Only two cars really worked out, worked with a... a Drafting duo in round two of qualifying, Patrick Sitch and Roger Ray. As consequence, they start on the front row with Patrick Sitch getting his first career pull. Let's go down trackside and get the command to fire him up here tonight at Pensacola. Drivers, start your engines. Interesting, a little bit of a running joke, but uh, back in the day, I didn't know how to spell Pensacola. I spelled Pensacola wrong, and uh, I've never heard the end of it. This weekend's given me a lot of opportunity to learn how to spell Pensacola correctly. But anyway, as these drivers will head around this super speedway behind the pace car, let's give you your top 10 overall in points coming into this race. And then, with this being close to the midway point of the regular season, we're going to also focus on what it looks like for your current eight playoff drivers. So top 10 coming to this race are as follows. Vance Caldwell, he is the points leader after taking the win last time out at Madrid. He holds a 15 point advantage over Sebastian Kukulan, who's second. Two time winner Brady Burkhart sits third. Cody Smart currently in fourth. He's starting close to the rear of the field here tonight. Trent Dunham currently sits in fifth. Philip Goldberg, he's in sixth. Eli Bright in seventh. Eighth place is Austin LaPlante. Ninth place, Ryan Butcher, our winner from Armory. And Riley Spurlytube, he completes the top ten. Now, right now, in terms of our five different race winners so far this season, Brady Burkhardt would hold the number one seed in the playoffs and would be joined by Vance Caldwell, Ryan Butcher, Seth Cole, and Jessica Shelton. And right now, the three drivers that would hold the spots six through eight via points would be second in the standing, Sebastian Kukulon. Fourth in points, Cody Smart and fifth in points, Trent Dunham. But if we have a different driver go to victory lane here tonight, that whole grid gets completely changed heading into next week's race. One thing I noticed in qualifying as well when drivers were in packs was the fact it's not that easy to be able to hold on to the lead. So I'm expecting to see a lot of lead changes in this race. And we'll have to see if Patrick Sitch is going to be able to uh, low line it down there on that double yellow line and be successful in coming around to leading the first lap. 21 laps of racing here tonight at Pensacola. Should be a good one. Certainly going to be a fast one as they enter into the restart zone. Green flags in the air. Let's roll at Pensacola. Toyota's on the bottom, Chevy's up top, inside line, very obviously the fastest way around the racetrack since it is the shortest way. And Patrick Sitch will get out to the lead, now moves up to block the advance of the outside line, Roger Ray and Diego Yepes. And Roger Ray gonna make a move to the inside, they're gonna be four wide going here into three, look at the Ford of Joshua Sakuli on the very bottom. He's got help from the aid of Matt Haas, 
Jonathan Zorlin there in the 48. Armory winner Ryan Butcher there as they fan out four wide, almost five wide to the line and leading the first lap will indeed be the entry out of WF9 Motorsports. Four wide, two rows, maybe three rows deep here. Pensacola's a very wide track, it can hold that. And we're almost five wide in the middle of the pack there. I think that was Diego Yepes in the middle of that. They are five wide. That's Zachary Taylor in the 85. I think that's LaPlante up on the top side. Laurent LaMount and Trent Dunham made up that five wide formation heading into turn three. They're still five wide, but they are giving each other space, so maybe they can go five wide several rows deep here. That would be awesome. As Jonathan Zorlin peels to the bottom, Joshua Lee goes a little bit lower, and Sakuli will still lead that lap, but he's going to have some Chevrolet company down the inside of him here into turn number one. And it'll be Joshua Lee on the bottom, who looks like he will go to the lead as Zorlin gets stuck in the middle. Here comes Trent Dunham. The Sega Chevrolet, and right behind him, you've got Derek Hamill in the 32. Got a cornucopia of different manufacturers up here at the front, Chevys and Toyotas. Had Ford out in front with Sakuli, William Duncan making his way up towards the front. We've also got the lone dodge of Eli Bright up there, the 12 car. You can see him in the middle of that four wide situation, that white and blue car. As Trent Dunham going to slide up in front of Joshua Lee, he's going to lead a lap, and I believe we have now had two lead changes in the first three laps of this race. So that, like I said, I, I was expecting that we were going to have a lot of lead changes, that the lead was not going to be a very easy thing to hold on to, and that's holding true at least early on in this race as Kyle Matthews now battles for second with Joshua Lee. And we mentioned that Cody Smart started near the rear of the field, if I remember correctly. I think he started uh, 39th. Now look at that 94, the best by Ford on the bottom. He's four wide for the second position, and we're almost to the completion of lap four. So Cody Smart, very fast race car, and proving that starting at the rear of the field is not that much of a hindrance here. That double yellow line is out of bounds, and a couple of drivers got down close to it. Tristan Folks in the 91 was one driver in particular I saw there. You cannot put two tires below that double yellow line to advance your position or else you're going to get black flagged. As Johnny Gardner now enters the mix there, that crystal Pepsi Chevrolet there with Cody Smart. They were working their way towards the front together, and now they're going to go to the front 1-2 together as they make the move on Trent Dunham heading into turn number three. Now Tristan Folk's going to move into the third position as you see them getting really close to that double yellow line off of turn four, those drivers on that inside line, but none of them have really gone low enough that it would be something worthy of a penalty. Folk's into third, Preston Plored now up to the fourth position. Preston started this race dead last, and now he's up in the top five. Oh, we got a spinner in the middle of the pack. Out of turn number two, I'm looking to see if that's going to bring out the caution because I think it was only one driver. And indeed, the yellow flag is out. First time tonight on lap number five. Actually, no, on lap number six, rather, that the uh, yellow flag is going to come out here. It was in the middle of the pack, but I think it might have just been a single car as Cody Smart is going to drag race with Johnny Gardner to the line. And he's going to get him by about five one hundredths so this is interesting because I was wondering what the fuel window was gonna be for these drivers and the way that they were giving each other room I was thinking hey we got a good chance of having this thing go green to whenever the pit stop takes place now with this caution it's gonna leave us with a big question mark heading in the division two race as to what indeed the actual fuel mileage is so a third of the way through the race, first caution of the day is out, and let's see who it involved. And the driver currently scored in the 40th position is actually last time out's winner two weeks ago from Madrid, the points leader Vance Caldwell. So was his spin what brought out the yellow flag? We're going to have to wait and see. 
We're also going to have to see if he hit anything. I'm seeing some damage on some of these cars, and I think it might have been a stack up here under pacing. Two-time winner Brady Burkhardt's got a little bit of damage, and I think I see a little bit of damage on the front of the Burger King Ford as well. But we'll have to see if Vance Caldwell is indeed the reason that this yellow flag came out. Everybody's coming to pit road. We'll see where they cycle around after the pit stops when we come back from the replay. This was out of turn two, five wide situation, and while we saw most of the five wide with them giving room, this was not a very roomy five wide. Jonathan Zorlin right down on the passenger side of Vance Caldwell. Turns him up, little contact for Jessica Shelton, then Zorlin comes down and gets into Jay Jefferson. They keep it going, though. You see Caldwell on the brakes, gets the car righted, mashes the throttle, and continues on. Although it does look like there is some front-end damage on that car. A little buckle on the hood after the contact with Shelton, but I think he might be okay. Luckily for him, he's got that win in the bank from Madrid, but... Not the way that he wanted to start off tonight's race here in Madrid, for sure, especially with the fact he comes in as the current points leader. While these drivers want to be able to end off the regular season as the regular season champion. But uh, Vance Caldwell, the reason for the yellow flag here, first time tonight on lap number six. Let's go back for the green flag. Well, before we do that, we're looking at a replay of an incident that just happened on Pitt Road. You can see the 17, left side of your screen, that's William Duncan. He made some contact with the 97 of Zach Winkle. And so he's around in front of Zachary Taylor. Now, we're focused on the 73 of Joshua Sakuli because both the 73 and the 17 had an extended stay on Pitt Road, obviously due to some kind of a Pitt Road incident between these two. Now, Duncan... He tries to get into his pit stall. He's going to get spun around by, that's Eli Bright. And look at the 17 go up in the air. Up into the air and then up onto the rear deck lid of the 73 of Sakuli. This is not Dragonette. There are no pit road glitches. This is simply drivers running into each other on pit road. And this is one of those pit roads that has the walls so you can't swing out wide to avoid a driver. And that is a tough break for Duncan and Sakuli. Duncan, who came into this race 16th in the points, was trying to move into the top 10. He's got damage now, and Sakuli got moved out of his pit box, had to teleport back to his pit box. He led the first two laps of this race, and now Sakuli and Duncan might end up getting a trap to lap down, or at least they will probably be slightly off the pace. I'm also wondering if that caused any damage to Zach Winkle or Eli Bright as well. We'll find out. Let's go back now officially for the restart here at Pensacola. So we'll be going green just around the halfway point, lap 11 of 21, which will give us a total of 12 laps to go. Or I'm sorry, 11 laps to go, rather. And as you see on the uh, top left of your screen, after the incident we saw on Pit Road, that is what actually is going to bring about our first retiree from the race. And it is Eli Bright, who had a great run at Madrid, jumped up into the top 10 in points, 7th in the standings coming into this race. And he is going to finish out tonight's event, probably in the 40th position. Sakuli still sits on Pit Road one lap down. There he is. William Duncan has returned back to the racetrack. In the 17, he is the last car on the lead lap in 38th place. So as we get ready for the restart here, Cody Smart came to pit road as the leader. He leaves as the leader. He'll restart over Johnny Gardner, Shane Lake in third, Austin LaPlante in fourth. Trent Dunham completes the top five. Then it's Tristan Folks, Ashlyn Boyd, Andrew Miller. First time we've talked about him tonight. Matt Haas Knight and Preston Plourd will complete the top ten. Cody Smart, who started this race from the 39th position. That is the inside of the final row. Out in front and showing the way here as the green flag is back in the air at Pensacola. I don't know if you saw it left side of your screen, but Joshua Sakuli just now returning back to the track and the caution's out again. Now these drivers are slowing down, waiting for the pace car to pick them up. They just waved off the green flag, it looks like, and I'm not sure why. But apparently we're going to run under pacing again. 
I don't see anybody back here that is damaged. So I'm not sure why they waved off the green flag, but they did. So a little bit of a mystery there. Well, I think that this is definitely going to help these drivers in terms of whether they were going to be able to make it on fuel or not, though, because this pacing lap is going to allow them to save some fuel. So what we're going to do is we're going to step aside for a moment and then we'll come back when we are indeed going to be going back green. It looks like we're going to have at least two more laps under caution as the lights are on atop the Pontiac Grand Prix pace car. We are finally ready to go as we ran four laps under caution right there. That was really strange, but we are back to green flag racing here at Pensacola. Going to really be interested to find out why we ran so many laps under the yellow flag. So it restarts us with six laps to go here at Pensacola. And now I think it's pretty safe to say everybody's going to be good to go on fuel with all of those pacing laps that we had. Cody Smart got a good jump, got out ahead of what's going to be a three-wide battle for second, Dunham, Lake, and Gardner. Although at this particular kind of a track where the speeds are so high and the draft is so good, not sure you want to be out that, in, out that far in front if you're Cody Smart. Five laps to go here at Pensacola. After working what was, I think it was about a seven lap caution. If you count the first lap, the laps we ran under the actual caution. And then we ran another extra four laps of pacing when they waved off the green flag. I'm still really wanting to know what happened in that regard. Why we were under the caution for so long. Especially at a super speedway. Normally at a super speedway you run under pacing two, maybe three laps at most. Unless it was the fact that we had a lap down car and that added on to the uh, lap counter. As Trent Dunham now to the lead. Trent Dunham comes into this race fifth in points. 36 points out of the points lead. And we documented the fact Vance Caldwell has had a bit of a struggling night so far. Bringing out our first and only caution so far. Well, I should say our first and only caution for a, uh, a wreck. We end up having a caution come out just when we were getting ready to go back green for our restart. So technically, we've been under two yellow flags, but only one due to crash damage. And take a look at this. Four wide. That's for the fourth position. Qualls to the inside of Miles, Boyd, and Smart. And look who snuck his way up into third place. The 81 of J.J. Roberts. Good run for the FedEx Chevrolet. A guy who struggled at Madrid. Dropped to 33rd in points. He's looking to rebound with a good run here tonight at Pensacola. Zachary Taylor there in the 85. He's now picking up spots side by side with Qualls for fourth as the top trio out in front trying to pull away. Robert's going to step out of line for second. That's going to allow fourth on back to catch back up. Here comes the pole sitter. Patrick Sitch trying to go coast to coast as he's worked his way back up into the top ten once more. Single file amongst the top four, maybe top five as I think Spurly Tube has cleared. Now Preston Plour takes a peek to the bottom on Trent Dunham. He's got Roberts with him. Can he get to the left rear quarter panel going into one? Not quite. Boy, he was close though. He almost got Trent Dunham in the rear heading into turn one. He had such a run. Now the top six single file. Who's going to step out here on the back straightaway? It's Roberts, but nobody goes with him. Preston Plour all over the back bumper of the Sega Chevrolet. If he makes a move, will anyone go with him? Now Zachary Taylor kicked to the outside. He's going to drop from third back to fifth, maybe sixth. And this time by, we will see the white flag. Preston Plourd needs friends. Question is, will he get them? Trent Dunham, white flag in the air. One lap to go at Pensacola. Preston made a move out of four, but nobody was with him. Remains about half a car length between the 1 and the 24. Roberts there in third. Spurly Tube in fourth. 
If someone makes a move, will they get any help? Preston waiting, not making the move yet. Now Roberts makes a move down low. Will Preston go down there with him? Doesn't make the move yet. He might be waiting for a move out of turn number four. Draws back a little, tries to get a run coming out of the final corner. Trent Dunham gonna have to do some blocking here out of turn number four to the start finish line. Preston pulls low. Roberts goes with him. Drag race to the line. It's gonna be Trent Dunham by maybe about half a car length winning here tonight at Pensacola Super Speedway. And you can see right there, if Preston had made that move one lap earlier, Trent Dunham would have been a sitting duck. But Trent Dunham, fifth in the point standings, he is going to put himself in the hunt for a playoff position here in Division I, taking his first checkered flag of the season here tonight at the Pensacola Super Speedway in what was a rather bizarre race, to say the least, in terms of how many laps we had to run under the yellow. I think they just wrecked back there, too. We almost had the leader get wrecked. He almost spun off the nose of, I think it was uh, Diego Yepes. But Trent Dunham, officially your winner here tonight, becomes the sixth different winner in the first seven races of the season. That means that now three quarters of our playoff grid is filled by drivers that have been to victory lane. And this is certainly going to be interesting, too, in terms of the fact that Trent was only 36 points back from the points lead coming into this race. Fifth in the standings, we'll have to see how much of a pressure he's going to be putting on Vance Caldwell for the points lead. Preston Plored so close, though, to getting that win, he's going to have to settle for second place. A good run, though, for a driver that also is trying to get into the top 10 in points, 13th in the standings coming to this race, so a nice run for him. J.J. Roberts, probably our where did he come from driver of the race as he popped up into the podium position of third. That's a driver as well that needed a good run. Riley Spurley, too, he's going to finish the night out in fourth. And how about Patrick Sitch? He started on the pole, didn't get to lead the first lap, got faded back as I think he was on the outside of a four-wide or maybe a five-wide situation early on. Faded back and then pops back up into the top five in the closing stages. Cody Smart, I think he spent the most time out in front with the aid of those pace laps that we ran under. But a great run for Smart, sixth place. And this is a guy that was fourth in the points coming to this race. So back-to-back -back weeks that he has had good performances. Then it's Zachary Taylor. He'll finish in seventh. Diego Yepes had very good speed in qualifying, showed it off in race, gets eighth. Matt Haas brings it home ninth. And James Qualls will finish the night out in the 10th position. As you look on down through the remainder of the results, I see a couple of drivers that are going to make this battle for the points lead very interesting. We already mentioned the fact that Smart, fourth in points, finishes sixth. Dunham wins. He came in fifth in points. Brady Burkhart came in third in points. He finishes 16th. And just ahead of him, Sebastian Kukulon, who was second in the points, finishes in 15th. So all those drivers are going to be putting the pressure on Vance Caldwell for the points lead heading to next week. And as for Caldwell... He did manage to battle back for at least a better finish than he would have had as uh, he finishes in the 30th position. A couple of drivers finishing way back there. Shane Lake and Austin LaPlante. 37th and 38th for those two drivers. So I'm not exactly sure what happened to them. I thought I saw rear end damage on the back of Shane Lake when he came to pit road there just moments ago. They finished way back. I wonder if we had a wreck and it didn't bring out a caution or something. But that hurts LaPlante because he came into this race 8th in the point standings. And Shane Lake was 21st in points. Let's actually, just for a brief moment, go back and see if we can find out what happened to the 55 and the 88. And here's your answer. They didn't wreck. They came to pit road when we went back green. So I thought that everybody was good to go on fuel. Apparently a couple of drivers must not have gotten their cars completely full and tough break there for Lake and LaPlante as they end up finishing this race in, I believe it was 36th and 37th, or 37th and 38th rather. One car finished off the lead lap, that was Joshua Zaculli with an incident on pit road after our first caution and that also took out Eli Bright who was the only driver to retire 
from this evening's event. But that is going to do it here from Pensacola. Trent Dunham takes the checkered flag. Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's race. If you did, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to compile the crew today. These have been your full finishing results, and these are the point standings heading into our next race, which is going to be coming to you as I just clicked on the wrong thing. Hold on. We are going to be going next to Coca-Cola Super Speedway in Boston, Massachusetts, I believe it's in. No, wait, that's M&M's. I don't remember where Coca-Cola is out of. But nonetheless, we are going to be seeing you guys for that race, but we still got to finish off this weekend for Pensacola. Tomorrow night, the Division 2 drivers take to this racetrack for what should be an exciting race, and maybe, just maybe, fingers crossed, we'll get to see some green flag pit stops. But until then, I've been Seth Cole, and you've been watching production of the SRA, offline racing at its best.